I was recently playing a game called Mini Golf and really liked their wavy text effect. It seems like a wave sweeping in and moving each character. So today we'll try to create this using Unity and we'll be able to use this effect on 3D text, UI text and even sprites that are placed in any pattern you want. The idea here is to keep each character on their separate game object with an animator component on them and then trigger their animation sequentially using some kind of script. Let's open up a blank Unity project with just a background. I also downloaded a custom font for the text. Let's create a 3D text object and set the text to just one character. Call it text and change the anchor to middle center. I'll use my custom font for this text and also reset the position. Let's now create a parent game object called text container. We will be putting all our animations on this game object. Drag our text inside this to make it a child and reset the position and maybe scale it down a bit. Now we'll add an animator component to the parent and go to our animation window and create a new animation called slide up. Add an animation property for the child text position. Reduce the animation time to about 0.10. Go around the half point and hit record and move the text slightly up. This will look like it's sliding up and back down. Now we have an animation but if we go to the animator window, you can see that this animation is set as the default state which we don't want because we would like this animation to trigger only when we need it. So let's create an empty state called idle and make it the default state for the animation controller. Now to start animating, we can create a transition between the idle and this slide up state and then add a condition for this transition. In the parameters window, click the plus button to add a new trigger parameter, call it do animation. Let's also rename our animation state to animation. So when this do animation will trigger, we want to change to this animation state. So set the condition as this trigger for our transition. Also uncheck the has exit time. And then we also make a transition back to the idle, which will happen automatically after our animation ends. Now we can see that the text starts in the idle position, but when we trigger this animation, the text animates and then goes back in the idle mode. If your object still keeps on animating, then try unchecking the loop time for your animation because we only want to animate it once. Let's move our animations to animation folder and also drag down our text container to create a prefab. We can then delete our object from the scene. Now we need to create an empty game object which will act as a container for all the text objects. Let's drop some of our prefabs inside this object, space them out evenly and also change each object's text property to the actual text you want to show. Okay, so on this outer game object, we will add the script that will sequentially animate all the children objects. Add a new script component called sequence animator on this game object. This will be a really simple script that just loops through each animator in the children and animate them one by one. Now to animate the children, we need to keep a reference to all the child animators. Let's create a list of animator variable called animators and in the start method we will initialize an empty list and fill it with all the animators in any of the children using get component in children. And just after this I will start a new code routine called do animation and define it below. I want this to loop forever so I'll add a while loop and then inside this I will loop through each animator in the list and set the do animation trigger for each animator. Then I'll return a wait for seconds and resume. If we hit play, you can see that each character is animated sequentially with a delay. And the animation starts with the first character because Unity returns the game objects in the order they are laid out in the scene. So that's pretty useful. Let's now add this wait time as a variable and replace the hard coded value. Now we can set this value in the inspector and play around until we are happy with the speed. But if you notice in the mini golf game, there is a small delay at the end of the last character. So we need to wait a bit after all children are animated before restarting them all. So for this we can simply add an extra wait for second at the end of the for loop and also define the wait end variable above. We can see now that there is a certain delay at the end of the last character. I'll just move the entire object down and play around with the scale and timing until it looks just right. And by the way, the text doesn't have to be a 3D text. You could also do the same with Unity's UI text. The process is almost the same. You would create an empty text object with just one character, put it in a container and then animate the container. The only difference is that for UI text, you would animate the anchor position instead of transform position. And then you will change the animator state just the way we did for the 3D text, like adding the idle state, setting the trigger and unchecking the loop on animation. You would again make a prefab out of this and put multiple prefabs inside an empty game object arrange them properly and put your sequence animator script on this parent. 
And here's a nice thing about this approach. Once you have set this up, you could easily change the animation to something else and get a whole new effect. For example, I will duplicate my slide up animation and call it scale up. Then drop our text prefab in the scene to test the animation. And in the animator window inside my animation state, we will drag our new animation in the motion field. I'll then experiment with this new animation and maybe instead of changing the position, I'll scale this thing up and then back down. I'll remove the old position property. And that's it. You have just created a new animation which is instantly reflected in your text. And this way, you can just drag drop the animation you like and change the way your objects animate. So if I don't like the scale animation, I'll just drop a different animation in my controller and change the effect. And you can imagine creating a whole library of these animations and playing around with different effects. And here's one more bonus tip. The sequence animator doesn't care what you're animating. It doesn't care if it's a text or a sprite. As long as the child objects have an animator component in them, it will animate them sequentially. And this opens up a whole new level of effects we can achieve. For example, let's create an animating heart just like we created a text. We will animate the heart scale up and then back down. And once we are happy, we will prefab it. We will repeat the animator state thing just like we did for the text and then we create our sequential animator game object and arrange our sprites just the way we want. And that's it. You have this weird ring of hearts which animate sequentially. Of course it looks stupid for me but I'm pretty sure you will make some really nice effects with this approach. And if you do, please post a link in the comments. I would love to see what crazy things you came up with. It was really fun making this video. You have been watching Indie Nuggets and I'll see you next week. Cheers.